Hey guys, Flay here. Today I'll be making a quick guide on the Wrath of Heavens mechanic from Dark Todon on Phase 5 on Dragon Song Stripper's Ultimate, so let's get right into it. Now here are the first things that you need to know. There will be a white dragon that can spawn on any cardinal position alongside two knights. In this diagram, it is at C and the knights are represented by the red triangles. The white dragon will dive towards the opposite cardinal, while the two knights will desert two random players and these players need to move as far as they can from the knights to not get killed. These players need to also pay attention to the white dragon's dive in the case they get too much into the middle, they will get clipped and die. One random player is going to get a blue deformation AoE, we just make this player move towards the left side facing the dragon, ensuring that they do not clip anyone else. This player needs to make sure that they do not stand directly into the cardinal, otherwise they are going to kill the player tethered to the knight right here. Hence, we put the blue marker a bit more towards the dragon, but not too much towards the middle. Everyone else who did not get a tether and a blue deformation AoE are just going to move towards the right side facing the dragon and lightly spread out. The reason for this is because as soon as the dragon is diving, there will be twisters on everyone else. Hence, everybody on the group needs to move forward otherwise they are going to get clipped by the twister and kill themselves and someone else. So as we see in this slide, the white dragon dives from C towards 3. There is the uh, knights that dive towards the reaper and the gunbreaker, the blue deformation AoE goes off and everyone gets a twister hence they move forward to dodge the twisters. In the next part of this mechanic, there will be two knights that will spawn on where the white dragon originally dived. So in this case, there will be a knight right here and another knight right here. These knights will carry an axe and the other will be a magician. You have to make sure that you locate where the Axe Knight is. The reason for this is because at the end of this mechanic, this Axe Knight is going to do a Dynamo AoE, hence you need to be inside him just like on Phase 1. In this diagram, the Axe Knight is at C and the Magician Knight is at 3. Do not, however, their positions can be interchanged. So for example, the Axe Knight could be at 3 and the Magician Knight could be at C as well. But let's take the Axe Knight is at C for this explanation. At the same time, two random players will be targeted with Thunder debuffs. As soon as these Thunder debuffs goes off, there will be a small AoE around these players and anyone else except that player who gets caught into it is going to die or get paralyzed. Hence, at the end of the mechanic, we make these players move away from the group. Right after, one random player is going to get targeted with a green dive bomb marker. Just like Jakob, as soon as this marker disappears, it is going to snapshot the location of where a black dragon is going to dive in. Hence, we make this player move towards where the magician knight is located at. Before everyone starts moving towards the axe knight at C here, there will be protein waves from Toden from the middle of the arena. Hence, we ensure everyone is loosely spread. But there is another catch here. As soon as the proton waves go off, the dive bomb marker is also going to go off. Hence, we ensure that the spot where the Magician Knight is located at is free for the dive bomb marker player. In this case, it is our Paladin at 3. In the slide 4, you can see that the protein waves go off. After the protein waves go off, one player is going to get 4 sets of eruption baits and another player is going to get 5 sets of liquid heaven baits. These players need to construct their movement in such a way that they do not keep anyone else with these airways while making their way towards the axe knight. In this diagram, it is our gunbreaker with the eruption baits and our red mage with the liquid heaven baits. As you can see here, they move towards the axe knight and at the end, they just stuck behind the Axe Knight inside the Dynamo while our Reaper and Samurai who had the Thunder debuffs stay in front of the Axe Knight and spread out and this resolves the whole mechanic. Now let's take a look at this video to demonstrate everything that I just explained. So here the boss is casting Wrath of the Heavens and becomes untargetable. And you will notice that the White Dragon spawns around 1 at a cardinal position right here and here are the Knights next to it. In this video, the knights are going to target our white mage and our sage with the tethers and our reaper is going to get the blue deformation AoE. So the reaper is going to be moving towards the left of the arena facing the dragon and everyone else is going to be moving towards the right side of the arena facing the dragon. The white mage and the sage are going to cross each other and are going to go opposite of the knights. 
So here, notice also that the dragon is casting Twisting Dive. As soon as this cast finishes and you see the dragon dives, everyone moves forward. So here, everyone moves forward and you will see Twisters spawn behind us. Here, you can see that the Red Mage got the Dive Bomb Marker. So this means that the Red Mage is going to be moving towards the Magician Knight, which is located right here. And as soon as everyone gets into their spot, you will see Torden cast the Ascalon's Mercy. And here, the Protean Waves go off. As soon as the Protean Waves go off, the Dive Bomb Marker goes off as well. And you will notice that the Red Mage also gets the Eruption Baits. And here, our Dancer is going to get the Liquid Heaven Baits. So here, they start baiting and move towards the Axe Knight. So here, I get nothing and I'm going to move towards the Axe Knight. Everyone is going to stack inside this dynamo behind the Axe Knight, but the ones with a Thunder debuff, in this case it is our Sage and our Gunbreaker, are going to be moving forward of this dynamo area. So here the dynamo goes off, the Thunder AoE goes off, and this resolves the mechanic. Right after this, the boss costs Ancient Quagga, and there is a Tank Buster, after this is the Death of Heaven's mechanic. Let's take a look at another video example. So here the boss is casting Wrath of the Heavens again. We are going to be locating the White Dragon. This time it will be spawning towards 3 and here are the Knights as well. I am the one who is going to be getting the Tether this time. So I move towards an intercardinal position. As soon as the dives goes off and the deformation goes off right here. I move forward to dodge the twisters alongside everyone else and here our sage got the dive bomb marker so he is going to be moving towards the magician knight towards 3 right there and then the proteans is going to go off. So here the proteans go off, I get the eruptions but I am a bit too close towards the axe knight so I am going to make my way a bit away from the axe knight in order to not clip anyone else and I move towards the axe knight here. And here you can see that the Liquid Heaven gets baited. There is also our Thunder debuff players who are going to be moving forward and inside the Dynamo and this resolves the mechanic. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you. The next set of guides will be on the Death of the Heavens mechanic. However, since our group has not gotten that mechanic completely cleaned up yet, I do not have a lot of footage yet and hence this may take a while to make. Other than that, you guys take care and have a good day or night. I'll see you guys later on.